Well, this is all about people who don't own an EV yet, in inverted commas. Their excuses, their reasons, their questions, their answers, their arguments on forums and posts. So this is gonna be what questions I get and how I answer them on why people don't own an EV. Well, here we are, that big long road to freedom, eh? I think I'm still looking for my road to freedom after all these years of motoring. Now, changed over to EVs, and why did I do it? Was it to change the world? Was it to make that change, save the planet, help the environment? Yeah, probably was a tiny bit. But then other things come into it. Was it to save money? Obviously, yes. I have saved a vast amount of money since owning an EV. I like a road trip like anybody else. I do intend to do maybe two more around the USA, hopefully both of them in full electric vehicles. There's plenty of chargers out there now, folks, in the US. They've got it about right, and it's getting better and better. Tesla superchargers as well. That's the kind of road I want to be seeing going down in an EV. Anyway, let's get back into this video and post. EVs are too expensive. Hi people, welcome to the channel. This is all about those folk who don't own EVs. EV being this big EV you see here. I'm gonna knock out the way now. I will say, I can't understand why so many people don't own EVs. The first one I always get in my face in forums and in, in arguments, in pub debates, anything, even with some of my relatives, is EVs are too expensive. Please, please stop looking at 45, even 40, even maybe even 35,000 pound EVs, up to the ridiculous amount of 70, 80, 90, which some of these top Audis are, are coming out price-wise now, and some of the top Teslas. Stop looking at them as your, as your EV. They'll never be your EV if you're moaning about price. They'll never be my EV until they're around eight years old. Then the price will come down to reflect what me, and the normal guy can afford. Before I go any further, I've got to say that uh, this is not a crack at people driving, you know, the very cheap 500 pound nails that last a year, then they go out and buy another one for 500 quid and blah, blah, blah. So no lectures please on cheap motion. Been there, done it. The thing I will say um, is yes, I, I can't disagree that some certain EVs are very expensive, like I've just said before. Stop looking at them. Stop making them your number one. Think used, think minimum use. In other words, the range. Stop looking at cars that can do 250 or 350 mile range. Because if you're gonna start onto the EV world and say that they're too expensive, you have to come down a peg or two, I'm afraid. Just as you do if you want that top range Audi, but you get a low spec Audi to begin with, and then eventually you get up to the top spec Audi as your earnings get bigger, as your savings get more, etc., etc. So don't aim high, aim, you know, to your budget. Now, you can buy an EV as cheap as 5,000 pound. It will be very low on range. It will be, you know, it might have a, have a bit of battery degradation and it will be a used item. So I don't agree that all EVs, all, in vertical, are expensive. I'm saying that some of them are way out of my price bracket and I don't even aim that high. And I've been in, I've owned EVs for, Wow, two and a half, going three years now nearly, believe it or not, since I first had my, my first Nissan Leaf. At the same time, I did run a five litre GT Mustang alongside that Nissan Leaf. Cost for the Mustang, whoo, cost for the Leaf, boom. That's what threw me, but that's later on in this video. So let's get back to it. So, are, you know, they are too expensive. No, they are not. They are not. If you've got a car worth 5,000, as you sit outside now, your car's parked up outside your house, you can change to an EV. Okay, so that's number one. They are not too expensive. Stop aiming high. The money you save in fuel costs, okay, and if you check on one of my last uh, EV ca EVs can and, and uh, fossil fuels cannot, you'll see where I did a maths equation there of cost, of running cost. It's on the channel, check it out. Uh, please do, if you've not been before and you're just popping on and you've seen this, you thought, oh, I'll listen to this idiot. Rant and rant. Yes, don't be put off. Have a look at that video. It'll give you some idea of running costs. Now, running costs have a big, big thing regarding what EV you can afford. 
If you've got a car on finance, okay, and it's what, a 10 grand car, 12 grand car, and you're gonna pay him for that in the next two or three years, your fuel costs alone in petrol or diesel are gonna average, and I'm very average in here, are gonna average between 1,800 pound to 3,000 pound a year in fuel costs alone. Fuel costs alone. And if that car you've got, you decided to buy something big engined or fast or sporty, and it's 20 to the gallon, you're paying nearly 40p a mile just in fuel, but you'll see that on the other post. I'm not gonna to dwell too much on that. If you've got a car that's gonna depreciate in value as well, and if you've got a fossil diesel, they are depreciating like rapido. If you go and get rid of that now, get yourself an EV, one, the EV will hold its money better, and 100% over the next two to four years as, as demand for the lower spec cars come into play. Secondly, your fuel costs alone that you will save will pay for your loan will pay the interest and some of your monthly payments, right, out of the fuel costs you'll save alone. All of them, virtually all of them at this time we speak, are road fund tax free. So if you're paying 30 pound, 140, 260, or even 550, if you've got a big old silly Range Rover, why you, why you would want one, I don't know, but if you've got one, that's lost totally. With an EV, you pay zero. I mean, there are cars that, you know, I've been popping up while I've been talking. You know, I've been putting them up there, as you've noticed. And you, yes, they are brand new, over £55,000, over £60,000. Don't dwell on those. Have a look at the used one. I've even got on here, best used EV below 20000 And if 20000 is too much for you, I've even mentioned some at around the five, six to eight. There are some, so there's no excuses. So don't bore me with this, I can't afford one, they are too expensive. I don't go for it. I cut it there. I don't go for it. Let's move on. I want to keep my classic car. Why should I get rid of my classic? Okay, I'm going to bring this right round now to the second one, which you've just heard. Classic cars. Classic fossil fuel cars. This is very hard for me because I do like, you know, retro classic shaped cars. And I have mentioned this before on a lot of my posts, but I will say it now because it is one of the arguments, one of the questions, one of the debates that I have with fossil fuel owners who have got the one car and it happens to be a classic car. My argument in this one, it's twofold. One, I do believe classic cars will be heavily affected with the way that we are going to be motoring in the next three, five, seven, ten years time. Might be gradual, but it's going to happen, folks. I'll come to that in a moment. Secondly, certain classic cars will hold their values. Others will not. Simple as that. If you've got a classic car that's a bit tatty, a bit mundane, and there's quite a few of them, don't hang on to it thinking it's going to make you money. It's not. It's not. Let's get on to the, the minus side of owning that classic for now and not owning an EV. The way I see it going forward is that classic cars will be one, the laws against them will be massive. The emission laws of this country will go up. They won't meet the criteria. I believe MOTs are gonna get more stringent. They won't meet that, that criteria. At the moment, you've got a very comfortable government pre-EV pushing, okay? Pre-EV pushing from say three, four years ago that were quite willing to get you, let you have road tax fund free just carry let you carry on you know motoring these very polluting cars my ad and i know they're in small numbers but they do pollute a lot more than a modern car let's face it you get behind one of these classic cars in from the the 50s 60s and even 70s even the 80s and you can smell that burning petrol and that smoke from that diesel and they're terrible they're terrible so let's just remember that so you've got all the emission laws that are going to go against you the, the cost of ownership is going to rock it right the Chinese at the moment give you, as a classic car owner, very, very cheap new parts. The Chinese are finishing that. They ain't, they ain't gonna be bothered about European or American classic cars. They're gonna be jigging up for parts, copy parts of EVs. You, all your braking systems and all, all that side of it. So don't think for one minute that parts are gonna be super, super easy to get. They're gonna be very rare, so it's gonna make them go up in price. Fuel, fossil fuel, is gonna go up in price against your classic car. The less we use it, the more of a premium product it becomes, the less demand there is for it, the more pricey it becomes. That's fact. Everything is that way. And fuel, i.e. be it diesel or petrol, will go the same route. Route. We'll stop these Americanisms. We'll go the same route. Now, because of that, ownership of a classic car 
it's going to outprice itself for the normal working class guy or the normal guy who's got a hobby on the side. That hobby is going to be super expensive. And there won't be much to swing that and think, oh, I can't do with this classic car. I've got to sell it. I don't use it hardly anymore. You know, there's not as many shows as there was because people ain't running them as much, blah, blah, blah. And I'm talking within the three to five year period. I think in 10 years time, I don't think you'll even run them on the road. I think in 10 years time, the emission laws won't even allow you to. The only way you'll get it to a show is on the back of a trailer, something else you've got to buy. So, you know, and I've, I've had this debate with people and they've turned around to me and they've said, you're talking rubbish. Do you really think that 100,000 pound classic cars are just gonna rot? I said, oh, yeah, I do, I do. They're gonna end up in museums. The best out there are gonna to go to museums or get trailer to shows. It's the only time you use them. You will not use a classic car that's 30, 40 years old on British roads in 10 years time. Can't see it, cannot see it. Play in Europe as well, I don't think they're, they're gonna allow it because they're gonna outlaw them for emission standards alone. So just think of all this when you know, you're putting pounds and pounds and thousands of pounds into a, a classic car now, because yeah, next two or three years, I don't think they're gonna be affected that much, but within three to five and five to seven and seven to 10, definitely, definitely. So uh, when it comes to classic cars, I'm, I'm a, 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 a pusher to electric conversion. Electric conversion is the way forward. And for all that money you're gonna put in for parts and all that money you're gonna lose, okay, if you keep them the way they are now, because your customer base is gonna drop as well. Um, as everyone transitions to electric cars and sees the joy of silence, of speed, of, of you know, ease of use, of hardly any uh, maintenance costs and cheaper motoring overall, this is all gonna affect classic cars, okay? So because of that, convert them. Get the electric conversion. And these, these specialists popping up all over the place to do classic cars and convert them to electric. So that's the way forward in my eyes. You've still got that lovely retro shape, you've still got the interior exactly the same. You can still look out your window and think, oh, isn't that lovely if, you, if that's what you're into? And you can still take them to shows and show your electric conversion off in your classic car. That's going to be the way forward for classics. So I hope that's cleared some up. That's the way I argue it or debate it, not argue it. That's the way I debate it. And I don't think I'm far off. I think that it's going to stay the same, okay? The status quo, trust me, it won't. Because People are going to move on to the electric car. Batteries are going to get cheaper. The drive motors are going to get better. The cars are going to get faster. What would you want with an old classic from 40 years ago when, in 10 years time, the latest classics will be the very first Nissan Leafs from 2010? 2011 they'll be 20 odd year old okay so you know by 2035 there'll be classic cars that you'll be driving and they'll be electric anyway so your old fossil fuel cars because you ain't going to be able to buy petrol cheap anymore that's going to shoot like a rocket right no tomorrow fuel stations filling stations where do you think they're going to be they ain't going to be on every street corner like they are now filling station your nearest filling station might be 50 mile away because they're all going to just fold up on themselves no profit in it the shops are going to close the only ones that are gonna stay open, you get the odd pump where you've got about 10 chargers, EV chargers. That's the only way. So you're gonna to have to travel more and further away for your fuel. It's gonna be more costly by, I would say double, if not treble in, in, in price, within 10 years. I mean, look at it now. I mean, God, I know it's a bit different at the moment. My God. If you're in a V8 now, on one of my last posts, if you've watched it, if you're in a V8 car, it's costing you 40 pence a mile in fuel alone, if it's doing about 18 to 20 to the gallon. How can you sustain that on a daily or weekly basis or even on a weekend away? You can't, you can't. Well, that wraps this one up uh, for part one. Hope you can understand now why I answer the way I do and what I think is gonna be correct in the future of EVs and the way the market is at the moment. Things are gonna change, people. There's a big transition happening here and it's the very first time that my generation and whoever, how old you are, it doesn't really matter. If you're old enough to drive now, maybe you might have some connection to fossil fuel cars but if you're like 9 10 11 12 13 14 even i don't think fossil fuel cars are going to have a big influence on you like they did on me through hollywood and television and i think electric cars will be the big influencers in the next three to five years just another reason why fossil fuel classics will basically come to an end that hollywood image that they gave them over the years and years will just die out because the young won't know and connect to it so anyway, that's part one done. Part two will be out within a week, hopefully, or maybe just after 
this seasonal time um, because I've got other things going on. Um, so with family, etc., and some stuff I need to sort out. So part two will be here. So look out. So please subscribe. Um, thumbs up. All good for analytics. I don't care about the thumbs down. Don't matter to me whatsoever. It has no detrimental effect on my channel. So do what you want to do. And if you're not subscribed, please do. You know, bang on that little bing icon, and you'll get these videos as soon as they come out in these posts. So look after yourself. Thank mm -hmm. you.